So you want to make a simple building system for your Unity game, but don't know where to start? In this tutorial, I'll be going over simple selecting, moving around, rotating, and snapping to a grid. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do in your new scene is, of course, create a ground for you to place your objects on. So what you do is go to 3D object and create a plane. Just keeping it at its default size is fine, but make sure to reset its transform so it's not in some crazy place. Next, you're going to probably want to reposition this camera so that you can actually like see the ground plane you're going to build on. Something like that should probably be fine. Doesn't really matter too much. And then, just for later on, you're going to want to create an empty game object called a uh, building manager. And just leave that there for now. So down here in your project uh, folder, create a new script and just call it building manager or something else if you want. And this is going to handle all the building. Okay, so here in our script, we're going to first want to start off with using our namespace uh, UniEngine.UI because we are going to need some buttons later on so that you can select your objects. We're going to keep the update, but you don't need the start right now. So we need to start off with initializing our variables. We need objects, so let's make an array called objects. That's fine. We're also going to need a uh, just a vector three to hold where the position that we want to put our object in. So just store as a vector three and just call it position or pose or whatever you want to call it. And you're also going to need some recasting stuff. Just call it hit. And then you're also going to want to make a layer mask. Uh, make it just serialized field so that it acts as a private variable, but it still is visible in the inspector. Just make it a layer mask and call it something like layer mask. That's what we need for now. And then we need to make a new method called fixed update. So in this, this is uh, kind of where you want to put all your physics stuff. You don't need to, but uh, this method is called at the end of each frame. So it's best for physics updates for performance. Yeah, we need to make a new raycast. This is going to get a uh, ray cast from the mouse's position on your screen and send it down into the world somewhere. And so that's what will tell the game what position to put your object that you were holding at. And we need a if statement that gets the ray cast. You need the ray that we just used up, or made up there. Just send it out for like a thousand units. You can make that a new variable if you want and have it so that it can change or just put it in any value that seems good. It's how far the raycast will go. And then you also want to use the layer mask that we made so that it doesn't like build on top of other things if you don't want them to be on top of each other. And you put in the braces and you do position equals hit dot point. And the hit dot point is getting the raycast hit here. That's what it's uh, sending out. And the point just gets the impact point in the world space. So that pretty much means that it's just telling the game where to put the object. Next, we need to be able to select the objects in the game. So we'll just make a new method, make it public, make it remember to do that because we'll need it to be accessed. In the parameters, we need to make an int index. This will tell the method what object you want to select. So we need to make a new variable. Just call it um, pending object or selected object or what you want. Just do it up here. No array. So it's just one object. It doesn't actually need to be public. Just make it private. It, later on, you might want to make it public if you want to make changes to it from another script. Like if you want to move the object, I might do another tutorial later on where you move objects, but that's not in this tutorial. So make a variable called pending object. Then we do pending object equals, and you want to instantiate it because you want to be able to use the object from the instantiating and it returns a, the object. So the pending object will be set to this and it will still create the object. Get the array that we made and call in the index parameter at the top just instantiate at the mouse position which is pose and then transform dot rotation is just going to get be the normal rotation as long as your building manager empty game object is rotated to zero 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 so now we can select the object and we are getting position in the world space but for the object to go to but we aren't actually ever setting the uh, new object's position so it's quite simply to do that, we just need to first check if the object is not null. So if there is actually a pending object, we'll do this stuff. If there isn't, it won't do anything. So we won't get any like null reference exceptions or anything. So this exclamation point equal sign means that it's going to be not equaling. 
and equals equals like that would mean it is equal to. So then we get the pending object dot transform dot position equals pose. Now we'll have an object that can move around, but we also still need to be able to place it. So make this new method called place object or something else if you want. And the reason I'm making a new method is because sometimes you might want something else to happen as while you place it. And we are going to have an if statement up here that checks for the input. And having something like that in the update method can be messy. And just make a new method can make it more organized and neat. Like if you want to subtract money or have a particle effect play or instantiate a script or whatever, then this is it's just nice to have it in a separate method. And you can also call it from something else. Like if you want another script to place the object for you, uh, for some reason you could do that. So now we have this and the object, this is pretty much just going to set the pending object equals null. So the object we have uh, that's being put into the game object is no longer going to move with the mouse. This won't happen anymore up here. And then we need to check if we are getting the mouse button down in this if statement to check if we press the, the left mouse button. Pretty simple. We just have it place the object. Now you could just put this piece of code up here, but as I said, it's a little more organized just to make a, a new method. So now we have this script and this will work. If we just go back into Unity and then we uh, put this script on our building manager empty game object we had, just reset its position, doesn't really matter, but that's what I like to do. If we just put it on here, we need to change the layer mask to be ground also, we need to have this layer set to ground. You will have to go through and add the layer yourself, so click on Add Layer and just have it in here. I already have it in here, just at three. You can put it at any of these if you want. It doesn't really matter, um, but you will need to go through and create it and then go back and select Ground here. I already had it made. So now that we have this plane with the ground on it, you can just rename it Ground if you want. In the Building Manager, we have this, but we don't have any objects to place. So first we should create some prefabs. Just create like a cube, a sphere, and a cylinder. It doesn't really matter what shapes you do. And reset all our transforms. So the prefab is correct. Then create them a new material. And just so it stands out against the uh, background, like call it red or whatever color you want to do, and just change the color. And now they're red, so they stand out against the white again better. And then in your prefabs folder, if you have one, or you can just drag them in there, drag them down there. You can delete these ones up here if you want. And in your building manager, in your objects section, drag all three of these three uh, these objects in there. But you don't, you don't have anything that can select the objects yet. So we'll need to create a new UI button. You can use TextMess Pro if you want. You'll have to import it probably once you've already done that. Or you can just use the normal button. And so we have this button. We're going to use just rename it like 1 or Object 1 or whatever you want to call it. Uh, center it by pressing Alt on your keyboard in the middle here. I do like 50 and 50, 30 maybe. Yeah, that looks fine. Rename it, put it up to 30 and position on the x go down like 55 negative 55 there uh rename the text to in here to be instead of button say one or whatever you want to call it doesn't matter duplicate it twice and the, this one will be called two put the text mesh pro and it's two and then when you have done that you need to put this one at positive 55 so now they're all centered and we need for each of these buttons we need to be able to call the method select object so down here in the on click part We'll need to click the plus sign. Just have them all selected in the hierarchy. So this is, goes a little faster. Drag in the building manager game object and click on the no function building manager. And then go down to select object. They'll have the zero in there by default. Uh, one stays at zero. Two, you'll put in one. And three, you'll put in two. Now, if you want to, in the select object method in the index, you can just subtract the index by one if you want to use the normal numbers, like one, two, three, instead of having to subtract it by one every time. I'm just keeping it like this for simplicity's sake for this tutorial. And so now we have these buttons will select objects in the array when you press them. So now if we go into play mode and test this, everything should be working properly, if I did this right. Click the button, 
and here we have our cube. We can click on, we can click and it will place it down. Here we have our cylinder, and here we have our sphere. That works perfectly. I know it's like all centered in the middle of the ground because that's where the object's center is, but that's gonna happen. Now I will actually go into my canvas and change constant pixel size to scale of screen size. That just makes it look a lot nicer. Um, like here, you can see instead of it like saying the same size, the buttons actually scale up and stuff. It just looks a lot better in my opinion. It, here you can stop if you want. It works, you can place objects and you can select them with the menu as long as they're in this array. But I'm going to add two more things. First, I'm going to start with having toggleable grid snapping so that you can move it around at like a certain position if you want. And then I'm also going to add rotation. So in your building manager script, you need to create these two methods. One that, so you can toggle the grid, make sure it's public. And you need to make one. This one does not need to be public. But it's a float, not a void. I just call it like round to nearest grid or something. Doesn't really matter what you call it. It's something that makes sense. It will have a red line for a little bit because uh, we aren't returning anything yet. Let's start with this one. So we need to also have a parameter up here. Just call it pose or whatever you want to call it. Doesn't really matter. It's just going to be what you're passing through it to round it. I'll just type it out and explain it in a second. You can copy it. Now, before I show you the new grid snapping code, I, I forgot to tell you to make some new variables. So first we're gonna need one called, it's gonna be a book called grid size. This will determine the size of your grid and what, what position it'll snap to. And we also need a, just a bool. You don't need to like make it public or private. And just call it grid on. And we also want to just serialize it, I guess. Make it toggle. That's why we're using unity engine dot UI. And just call it grid toggle. These are the three variables you need to make. Now down here, so essentially what this is doing is it's getting the remainder of the position and the grid size. So it's basically dividing this and this and then getting the remainder, so what's left over. And to round, that, to round the number down, we can just subtract the difference that we're getting. But we also might want to uh, round up so it's snapping a little better. Instead of always rounding down, it might look a little weird. So we just have this if statement to check if um, the difference is greater than grid size divided by two, and if that case, we'll add it instead. And then we can return the position, and that's pretty much it. To then actually have the object snap, if the bool, if grid is on, then we're gonna set the pending object.transform.position to a new vector three. And this new vector three is going to just use the new method we just made using all the positions from the mouse. What this is doing is getting each position from the mouse position and uh, rounding them. Pretty simple. But what if the grid isn't on? Essentially, what we just have to do is write an else statement that will just do what we originally had, which is this. Just drag that in there. Now we also want to be able to toggle this grid, correct? So we just, this will be called by the toggle whenever it's changed. So if the grid toggle is on, then the grid on will be true. And if it's not, grid on equals false. What we have to do now is go into the inspector and assign our new variables. So first, we just have to set the grid size. Something like 0.5 is fine, doesn't really matter. And we need to go into our canvas and create a new toggle. So we go UI toggle. Just call this grid, or grid toggle, whatever you want to. Go over to it, have it go down. Uh, you can decrease the width, doesn't really matter. You want to go over around negative 125. Then in the grid toggle label, Rename it to be grid. And remember to make sure that the bool is equals true in the code so that it starts true. So now that we have our grid toggle, we have to first make sure that we have on value changed. We drag in our building manager and we make sure to set that it is going to turn grid on and off, toggle grid. And after you have changed this, then you need to go to the building manager and assign this grid toggle. 
So when we play the game, we should be able to see that when we select this object, we have it so that it snaps to a grid. So you can see that it's snapping the movement. But if we turn it off, we see that it moves freely again. And it works with anything. So the last thing I'm going to do today is show you how to make a rotation method. So we're going to do it kind of the same way we did place object root, make a new method, and just call it like rotate object. And then what we should do is just use the method that it gives us, appending object dot transform dot rotate. And you do vector three dot up so that it rotates around the y axis, and then rotate amount. which is a variable that we need to go up here and set. Just put it right, right above the grid size. So make it a public float rotate amount. And it, we also need to be able to check if we are going to press the R button. So if input dot get key down, and use key code dot R, then you will rotate the object. And that should already work, as long as we remember to assign the variables in the inspector. Here in the building manager, we should assign the rotate amount to be selling like either 45 or 90 is fine, whichever you want. I think 45 might be a little easier to see that we're actually rotating with her objects that we have, because if with 90, we won't actually be able to tell that they're rotating, what they will be. So here we have this object, and if we press R, you can see that our object rotates. We can't really see with these objects, but they are rotating. You can kind of see it. So just look with this. So now I can build this epic diagonal house, or whatever you would call it. And our grid snapping still works. Ah, oh, I messed up. So if you want to see another tutorial on this system, just expanding upon it, let me know in the comments. Uh, what I'll probably do is just improving it a lot, so maybe adding a way that you can deselect the object you're holding, like right-clicking, and also maybe like click on the object and delete it with the UI thing. And maybe also surface snapping, so like if I was placing this cube, it snaps to the surface of the sphere, so like, and it does something like that. Uh, there's probably a few other things I could add, like a smooth rotate option, or like where you hold down R and it just matches where the mouse is and a few other things. Now, you don't have to just use primitive objects with this building system. So let's say I have a few prefabs here that I want. So if I go to my building manager, subtract these three prefabs, then select these three, drag them in there, hit play. You can see that I can now place these trees and say like build a little forest. That pretty much sums up this tutorial for now. If you want to see an expansion on the system, leave a like on this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.